Hello and welcome back to the Technocamps tutorial series on GameMaker Studio 2. This video I'll be talking about collision masks. Here we have a little sample game that we'll be using to demonstrate collision masks. At the moment I have it so that the player character, this very fetching teapot here, has a collision event with the obstacle. And when that collision event is triggered, the player cannot move through the obstacle. Now, the way that Game Maker handles collisions is using something called the collision mask. The collision mask is a shape that describes the parts of a sprite that do the colliding. For example, if I go down, we can see that the feet of the teapot are colliding with the wall. If I go sideways and kind of hit the top of here at an angle, we can see that even though the uh, sprite is not technically touching the obstacle, I still can't move onwards. And this is all given by the shape of the collision mask. So let's have a little look at the collision mask of this teapot and see if we can improve it somewhat. Now, this is usually handled in the sprite itself. So I've opened up my player character sprite, and in the sprite editor here, where you can see that there are several options, including over on the left here, the collision mask dropdown. Now here is where the shape of the collision is um, decided. Usually it's set to automatic. Automatic setting is one of the easiest. It just draws the uh, area of collision to be around the whole area encompassed by the full size of the sprite. Full image is an alternative where it takes up the full image of the sprite, including the extra margin we have around the outside of this one. Manual gives you control nubs where you can actually draw it yourself. Okay, so using this, if I wanted to be very daft, we could say that the only part of this teapot that will collide is going to be the handle. So I'm going to draw the collision mask there and we'll see what effect that has. I've clicked the wrong button, let's stop that and click the right one, there we go. Let's play the game. Okay, so here the game is loaded up and it should have picked up the new collision mask that we just drew. Let's test it. Let's see what part of the teapot collides. And there we are. The collision is now based around that rectangle I drew around the handle, not necessarily the whole of the teapot. We can tell because the legs of the teapot are going through the block because the legs weren't included in the collision mask. So that's one way you can edit the collision mask. Let's look at now some of the other options we have. So again in the sprite editor, that was the manual option and that's controlled with the control nubs. But we have some others. So currently this is set to rectangle. That's quite useful. But there is also one called Rectangle with Rotation. To demonstrate this, I'm going to now instead look at the collision mask of the wall object rather than the teapot. But first, let's actually edit our room a little bit, just to show you what Rectangle with Rotation does. So in the room editor, you've got options to resize um, objects and uh, you know give them interesting dimensions you can also rotate them okay let's rotate this object here and uh, let's just put it there just to see what the collision will behave like now at the moment the collision mask of the wall is set to be automatic and it's chosen the full uh, the full image of that sprite. 
It's also set to um, rectangle as well. So we'll see what happens when we try and collide something which is set to rectangle. And we've added rotation in the room. Okay, there we are with our very ugly object. Let's try and collide with it. Oh dear, actually I can't move. I can't move to touch it at all. Okay, the reason for this is that the collision mask of this slanted object here is set to rectangle and automatic. So it has selected the collision mask to be an invisible rectangle around the whole of this, not including the diagonals. So it's a rectangle that encompasses uh, the full dimensions of this, but it's a perfectly regular rectangle with no rotation. If we now go back to this sprite and change that to rectangle with rotation, that will now enable the, um, the, the better collision mask. So let's go and see now. Can I go to, up close to it? I can. And yeah, I can collide with it as it's diagonal. That's just because we enabled the rotation option. Okay. So that's rectangle with rotation. That's only really useful if you're going to be rotating objects either through code or in the room editor. Let's go back to the teapot and see what other collision options we've got there. So we've done rectangle, we've done rectangle with rotation. We've got ellipse, which draws an oval or a circle. Again, you can edit that with the control nubs or you can put that into automatic we got diamond we got precise and precise per frame now these four all have after them in brackets the word slow the reason why game maker has labeled these slow is because when you're doing precise collision detection it has to check every pixel because precise collision detection means it hugs the side of the uh, teapot perfectly. And we can see that if we go to full image or automatic with precise turned on. It has drawn the collision mask around the exact edge of the teapot and it's done that for each frame because this is an animated sprite. Because this is much more uh, complex than a rectangle, there is much more computation that needs to happen to tell whether a collision has happened. So, if you turn on precise uh, collision detection, be aware that it could slow down the game, especially if you've got lots of objects using the precise detection. So at the moment, I've only got the uh, teapot with precise detection. Let's see if I can go up close to the corner of this block here. Yes, I can. I can go quite close because I've got the precise detection turned on. So the spout collides, the little bit of steam collides, the handle collides, the legs collide, but all individually. Okay, that pretty much sums up collision masks. I will mention that you can override the collision mask of an object. At the moment, here it says the collision mask of the teapot object is set to the same as the sprite. We can get it to use a different collision mask or draw a different one. But that's just alternatives there. In any case, that's the end of this video. I hope that has proved useful. If you want to keep in touch with the later videos coming in this series, make sure to subscribe and keep checking the playlist below.